This is Stockholm. The time is a quarter to ten in the morning, and tomorrow will be Christmas Eve. Day by day, Stockholm newspapers are carried by air to all the corners of Sweden, even to the inhospitable snows of Swedish Lapland. And here's a story of how some of them went on this 23rd day of December in the brief twilight between dark and dark. Som är emot violetta vågor Brunsviks vassen står där sedan så Långt i syd mot bleknad himmel blänker Fönstrens rad som guld på södermalm Och på slottet vakten flaggan sänker Stockholm svalkas efter dagens kväll Se i nätta flockar som du kan av syrener, rosor och tulpan Stockholms unga damer och koketter skymta fram vid fejts och röda kvarn Och i Kremla klanka två sitt bilar färdas herrar som får tyna smitt i ett skymningsregn av avspil Stilla, stilla, ja, så där, ja, det blir fint. Det är just så, ja. Tack. Jag ska få spegeln och göra det vackert med det. Vackert, tack. Ja, det kan ju behöva. Det kan lite grann bak också. Tack. Tack. Ja, nu ska vi ta igen. Nu sticker jag. Hej då. I'm curious how the right kind of pictures of the right kind of girl seem to find their own way onto the art editor's desk. A brisk professional flick of the wrist and the oldest of all human enthusiasms is staring palely behind tracing paper. Across the room, the wire machine starts to unwind a picture from Östersund in the north. Ah, now this is called human interest. An old lady from Lapland has won a quarter of a million in a lottery and is going to fly home in an aeroplane. <laughs> Pretty girls, money, and nice old grannies. Press stuff all over the world. A whiff of the big city for the north, and a breath of the tundra for the town. The newspaper flashes its mirror for a moment and conjures up a common experience for the better part of half a million people out of paper and ink and hurry. Tackar så mycket. Det flug nach Kopenhagen geht in ungefähr en halv stund ab, nicht wahr? Jawohl. Selina. Verzeihung, ich, ich verstehe Sie nicht. Ich bin Ausländer. Voilà votre billet. Bon voyage. Par ici, s'il vous plaît. The ebb and flow of languages, exotic and familiar, and little glimpses of freight as impersonally foreign as the passengers themselves, are part of the atmosphere of a great international air terminal. Airmen and aeroplanes chopping up our great distances into suburban trips are catching up with our languages, our treasured symbols of separation, 
and sponsoring their own weird homeless jargon. Report books. On board. Circuit breakers. Set. Smoke masks and oxygen. Checked. Up latch release. Safety off. Emergency brake. Safety off. Three, six, contact, contact. The runways are a bleakly authoritarian world where the voice of the control tower is absolute. And even the captain is subject to the small, tinny voice in his headphones. Stop, says the voice. And wondering why, we stop. Uh-uh, that's the trouble. Passengers in their lovely, lordly aircraft don't wait for freight flights. The captain composes a little joke about the menu behind that line of discreet windows. Then they grab it. Then they last up with caviar or champagne. Permission to take off, and here we all go again. Captain, first officer, steward, 100,000 pounds worth of aeroplane, pop singer, pin-up, and the little old granny from Lapland. Next stop, Östersund, below the Arctic Circle. It's an odd thing about people and places in the newspapers. It comes as a little shock to find that they really exist, like Granny Anderson here, who's come into this small northern town of Östersund to pay her winnings into the bank, and is now leaving for the airport in the unaccustomed splendor of a taxi.
not as big as Stockholm Airport, perhaps, but if possible, even cleaner. And the local press are determined to make an occasion of the big win. Granny Anderson has been given a cape with 250,000 kroners written on it in coloured icing. And she's had a telegram too. If you've not been born and brought up in a world of early editions and deadlines, frantic for news and pictures, it all seems just a bit unreal. To Mrs. Anderson, it seems likely to damage her cake, so she's taken steps to protect it. The press don't seem to notice that either of them have gone. Outside, the sun is now as high as one can expect in Östersund in midwinter, and our Stockholm newspaper flight is taxiing up to the apron, ready to start discharging its cargo into small flights to a long list of snowbound hamlets. Beyond the passenger lounge, the managing director of an airline leaves his office, pausing for a moment to pick up a paper sack of potatoes. This is Spurkis, the outback pilot, who owns this aeroplane and two others besides, and who will fly the potatoes and Granny Anderson to her home in Lapland. Nobody ever broadcasts for Spurkis passengers. They can see through the window when he's ready. And soon, everybody trails out over the snow with the press obligingly carrying some of the parcels. A bundle of Stockholm papers with Granny Anderson's picture is due to catch her flight from the look of things, is just about going to make it. Someone seems to have had the kind-hearted, if slightly irregular idea, of broaching the cargo to present her with a copy. Things are a little bit less official in these parts. Are we clear for flying? Hey, hey, contact. Goodbye uniforms, goodbye control towers and radar and huge, comfortable aeroplanes. This is where the far north begins. Yes, that's you in the Stockholm papers. When Granny Anderson was young, this was the wilderness. Four days sledging through a black barrier of forest and darkness to the three-house settlement where she was born, and which now lies 70 minutes north-northwest of Östersund Airport. Thank you. 
This is something quite new, too. Once a newspaper was a rare and probably ragged object, usually carrying a date from the previous summer. Today's newspapers, and what's more, today's Stockholm newspapers, with a member of the family all over the back page, would make this a day to be remembered and celebrated, even if Granny hadn't won 20 years' income on the lottery. <laughs> It's a long time now since the people of Lapland varied a staple diet of smoked reindeer with titbits of dried fish. But for the children, at least, a cake like this is as much the mark of an occasion as grandfather's closely guarded bottle. <laughs> The short day is coming to an end, and Spurkis is off again into the apricot northern sky. Who would have thought it? All that money and a picture in the papers. The same papers as the young lady with the beautiful sleek fur coat dark against the lights and glittering water of far-off, unseen Stockholm. Aeroplane flights and seeing Stockholm. Fur coats, too, if she wants them, now. Berkis, the Lapland pilot who owns three aeroplanes and who knows the north as no other pilot knows it. The airline crew humping their tons of newspaper. The press men, the truck drivers, the voice in the control tower. Little Granny Anderson from Lapland and Lil Babs, the pop singer, who met in a Stockholm newspaper printed not four hours ago. Goodbye, because we may not meet again. And good wishes, for tomorrow will be Christmas Eve. Thank you.